Uh, happy Saturday morning, listeners. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. That was garbage with Only When It Rains. This is Joe Cornish speaking. And the voice you're about to hear <laughs> might, not, might not sound like it usually does. I'm Ray Winston. Good morning. Yeah, Adam's uh, ill today, so I'm very privileged to be joined by uh, one of Britain's, well, in my opinion, greatest actors, Ray Winston. Thanks a lot for coming in, Ray. Yeah, my pleasure. I will, I will find your monster. Will you? Yeah. Great, good. It's not a problem if you've uh, got... What's it like working with, um, you know, against blue screen? It must be very difficult. Well, it is difficult, yeah, because you've got nothing to work with, you know, you've just got this mm. big blue screen. So if the scene calls for some interaction with a large mm. patch of mm. blue, you're sorted, that's great. Mm. But if, 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 you know, you're supposed to be talking like people and all that sort mm. of stuff, it's difficult, you've got to use your mind. You've got to create, you've got to create people and, uh, like, animals in your mind. Let's go back to the beginning, though. Uh, Nil by Mouth, a tour de force. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah. Um, I love the Tour de France, and uh, as soon as I heard it was about that, I wanted to get involved. I love the bikes, all that stuff got cut out, obviously, but still, yeah. you know, punching, all the punching and shouting, I love it. So do you want to... Uh, select a first track. You've selected some uh, some songs, Ray, to play today. Yeah, well, I just have to correct you, straighten you out on the first track. You had uh, garbage. You, only, you said only when it rains. That's an insult to the garbage. It's only happy when it rains. It's the whole point of the song. It's the whole point. Sorry, the whole Ray, point of the song. Right. Don't hit me. You know what I mean? It's the irony of only being happy when it rains. That's what the whole song's about. And then you miss out the word happy. It makes a mockery of it. Indiana Jones. You're in the new Indiana Jones. Yeah, yeah. I what's, play. what's that about aliens? It's about aliens. Yeah, they come down. There's a big. There's exciting. There's a chasing. No, and I'll try <laughs> some bloke, he comes after me and I'll run, I'll run off and I'll shoot him. It's good, I don't know what it's about. Uh, I, it's all green screen again, so I only tell you afterwards what, what it is, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, it's exciting. So what record have you chosen, Ray? Yeah, I've chosen one by the Young Knives, do you know them? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're wicked, they're a good band, uh, and there's three of them, three blokes, I love blokes, and uh, so that's why they're my favourite band. Well, here's the Young Knives with Up All Night. There you go. That's the young knives. Now, uh, this is Adam speaking, not not Ray Winston. Yeah, we don't want to get fired from, don't the, get fired. from the castle for lying. I just got a bit of a cold, listeners, and it's gone to my cords. It's more than a bit of a cold. Well, it started off as just losing my voice. I had a gig earlier on in the week, and it went wrong. Really? But then I could what, the feel gig the, or the voice? No, the gig was good. The voice went wrong. And uh, I could feel the cold settling in there, mm. getting into the back of my throat, you know what I mean? First it starts off just a little bit phlegmy. You know? Face it, you like it. Uh, no, uh... Oh, come on, you do. I like hearing it. You do. I really like it when yeah. my voice goes wrong very rarely. I'm not right. boasting in any way, but it just, just never happens. And yeah. when it does, I love it. Yeah. It's like being possessed by a sexy man. A sexy man. Yeah. Yeah. Not in a de sort of devil possession way, just in a, in a sexy way. You know, it gives you a chance to live in someone else's vocal shoes. Can That's you, true, yeah. Can you have vocal shoes? You can. Yeah, I've got them on now. It's really a new nice. pair. Yeah, it's a new pair of vocal shoes. Yeah. No, you absolutely, that's true. But then at the same time, it's not very useful if you want to be taken seriously or just talk normally. People the think you're being a pawn. Sorry. Carry on. The thing that's happening with yours is it's, <coughs> is it's changing. Right. There are many demons within you. <laughs> it's got different, uh, well, it sort of just cuts out every now and again, doesn't it's, it? It's shifting its pitch. If I, because it's, see, the thing is, if I uh, speak fairly low, Right, mm. then it's normal. Everything's more. No, or less that's okay. not normal. I mean, it's normal within sort of a ludicrous speaking low way, but then if I try and go up a little bit, it just completely cuts <laughs> out. <laughs> that's you know good. I mean? And if I try and hit any high notes at all, I just sound like a kind of a weird uh, freak. It's. Uh, I like it. Yeah. It's like uh, you've got a kind of um, reel to reel tape player right. inside you, and it's it's switching speeds it's gonna be it's, it's off putting though isn't it for uh, i like it man i think it's gonna two be and three a very, quarter hours it's gonna be a very distinctive show because of it yeah i'll just have to just have to remember to speak fairly um you know in a low register if i'm gonna make any points i'd keep talking i just love the sound <laughs> <laughs> anyway folks we've got uh, an exciting show for you this week of course as, as ever we're gonna resolve song wars last week's song wars uh probably in the next link don't you reckon does it hurt at all because it sounds yeah, a bit painful it, it, it i, I wouldn't little... want people to think you're in pain um if it does hurt lie no it doesn't, it hurt. doesn't hurt it doesn't hurt <laughs> no you're you okay. being honest no not really it is a little painful right. but i've got I've, I'm, I'm hopped up on uh benelin strepsils <laughs> no i couldn't find any strepsils oh. when i came I, you know vocal zone is another good thing do you ever have those 
Uh, yeah, no. Good what? for the vocal, vocal cords. Zone. Yeah, they're like little black, um, chewy things, and you, you, uh, chew them up, and they're, they're like an intense, uh, explosion of menthol. Right. And, uh, that, that helps with your vocal cords. Of course, zone. there are other sore throat medicines. Of course. Available. Of course. And mm. cold, uh, mm. remedies as mm. well. Mm. But that's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm on at the moment. Yeah, nice little bit of, yeah. uh, stuff in it. So we've got great music coming up, listeners, and the, the results of last week's Song Wars. Uh, plus text the nation, uh, plus we'll be, you know, uh, discussing the future of Song Wars. Uh, but for now, a, a bit more music, Ray Winston. What are you choosing now? Well, no, this is a, this is a new one that you might not have heard Oh, before. is this one of mine? Uh, is it? Yeah, is yeah. It? Yeah, this is, this is a, a free play. This is a very, uh, good Australian band. I think they're Australian. They're called Operator Please. They're very young. <laughs> oh, this had a really good video, didn't it? With them, uh, yeah. climbing around MC Escher style. Yeah, this is the one that I saw on, uh, From the Basement that right. Nigel Godrich produced, a uh, program on, on Sky Arts. Mm. Yeah, really good music show. Uh, yeah, really young Australian band. They're aged between 14 and 16, I think. They won a, like a high school battle of the bands competition. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you wouldn't know from listening to it, because this sounds really good. This is called, just a song about ping pong. Yeah. It's time for song wars. It is the song. <laughs> wars. I just said yeah for the yeah. Wars. Song, song, That's song, what song. it's like on this show, yeah. you know. It's about it's free and fast and loose. It's free and yeah. easy. Yeah. yeah. G give me a convention, man. I'll stand on it. You know. No, I won't stand on it. You'll flip it over. Yeah, I refuse to, if like someone says, excuse me, could you, you stand on this it. convention? I'd say, no, I can't. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to do Give that. Give me an envelope. Yeah. I'll push it. Yeah. It's, all I, the way across the table. I'll push it right off the table. Off the table. Yeah. Give me... An edge and I'll stand on it. Oh, it'll... Yeah. And I'll, I'll love it. Yeah, I'll cut something with Ooh, it. Oh, I'll cut something Ooh. with it as well. And, you know, if you introduce me to the edge from you two, yeah. I'll be friends with him because I love it. I love anything edge. edgy. I love edginess. Edginess. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Um, who was that? Was the Temptations with Law of the Land? Um, and yeah, now it's time for Song Wars. Before we get to the result, uh, let's have a look at some of your emails. That now, we just received. to uh, just to fill you in, listeners, Song Wars. We've been doing this feature since we started here on Six Music last uh, October, and uh, every week Joe and I have come up with a new song for you guys to listen to and uh, you uh, and you send us your votes for which one you like best and i week after week have been more or less humiliated and uh, i've lost out sometimes only just to joe but most often and particularly last week absolutely crushing humiliating defeats sometimes you know deservedly so i lost out to uh, the right and wrong song which was certainly better you know when all is said and done than the toothpaste brush well you're song. very kind but as a number of emails has uh, have pointed out i think some people think that you know your songs uh even though they might sort of fluctuate <laughs> in quality when they reach a peak they reach a higher peak than mine do oh that's nice and equally that no that is nice yeah whereas i think some people in these emails and i've got to say mm. listeners thank you because we've had an, am an amazing quantity of uh, e emails some of them very long um but the general consensus is that my tunes are a bit sort of slick and um you know less mad and therefore <laughs> slightly less satisf a bit mainstream. So know? if we were bands, which band would you be and which band would I be, I wonder? I think I, I've got a sort of... Well, you know, I hesitate to say this because it might sound self-aggrandizing. Well, I you, don't you know, mean it in that way, but I'm a bit Coldplay-ish, maybe. You reckon, yeah. You know, a bit a bit kind of overly sincere, uh -huh. a bit kind of w warbly and kind of formulaic. <gasps> what are you saying about Coldplay? I'm s I'm saying that they're brilliant. Yeah. Did that not come across from that <laughs> collection of terms? <laughs> uh, and you're, you would be, um. Uh, Shed Seven. Uh, Shed, no. <laughs> so someone better than that. You know, Iggy and the Stooges. Candy or, Flip. No, <clears throat> someone, someone good. Yeah, well, no, if I was being flattering to myself, I would, uh, say something like The Flaming Lips or something or The Fall. <laughs> <laughs> what is that voice? Who, the voice that I've got. Yeah, who are you? I'm just, it sounds like I'm just a drunky man that's it just does. come in from all night it's drunken exciting. sessions. So anyway, here are some, some of the, uh, emails we got. First of all, Chris Bre Best, Chris 
I'm going to call you Breast because yeah. I did anyway. Breasty. I'll stick with it. Uh, has has emailed to inform us. I can't actually speak. That uh, there's a Facebook group uh, which has been set up with a poll to find out what the nation's favourite feature actually is. Mm. And apparently, text the nation currently has a hundred percent of the vote. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I what? think it might have been set up specifically <laughs> for text the nation. Yeah, I wonder uh, what the other features on there are. Well, someone else is it, Chris? Someone I'm not sure whether it's attached or not has sent a printout of the page. There are two entries on it, mm. one of which is from Chris Best, <laughs> uh, and they're both voting for so uh, for Song Wars as the favourite feature. So oh, okay. that, that there are no other features nominated really so not even text the nation which is the nation's favorite feature <laughs> you know what that means that means we can say it is the nation's favorite feature yeah as voted for on facebook everyone's on facebook everyone is that's almost a national survey yeah that's that's good enough um tom blackett says of adam's song last week uh and last week listeners we would we did songs about net piracy yeah um Tom Blackett says, in a kind of school teacherly way, mm. that was really good, Adam. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. That's it. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> That's it. Um, and and also, uh, listeners, if you're if you if you've got no idea what we're on about here, the uh, end of the whole saga is that last week, uh, for a combination of reasons, not only because I was throwing a kind of little uh, pathetic strop, I said, well, that's it. I think we should retire Song Wars for a little bit. And, uh, you know, just give it a rest. People may have connected your losing with that. I'm sure they did. Yeah. Listen, because I, I, I won't lie, I was, I was just absolutely, I was distraught. I'd spent three days on my, uh, on my nutty piracy song. I was in a very dark, dark place. Mm. You know, like a little dark box. Dark place? Yeah. Where is the, oh yeah, I was in Garth Marenghi's dark place. Yeah. And it was scary in there. And so, uh, you know, but d wasn't it nice, though, this week not to have to do a song? Uh, did you just yeah. do, do you just do one anyway? Yeah. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. What was it about? I'll play it later in the show. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, uh, here's an email from Paul de la Pena. Yeah. Not sure if that's how you pronounce it. He says, I'm voting for Adam this week. He sounded quite miserable about Song Wars last week, although I know he's got a natural tendency towards this <laughs> because he used to live on the other side of the road from me in Stockwell and drive around looking grumpy in his bright orange car. Well, that's just cr fright Creepy. Yeah. He said he used to. He's moved. Right. Yeah, no, I don't I have was that car you. anymore. That happened to me once with a neighbour who who moved out, a guy that lived across the street, and the day before he moved out, he came across and, and said, Hello, a uh, fan of your stuff. I watch you coming and going. <laughs> <laughs> he said that. <laughs> that's great, isn't it? Right, God. Right. Uh, another email from Michael Foreman, who says, uh, Adam must win this week. His piracy song is best. My girlfriend says she likes the lyrics of Joe's song. I only chose this email because it's nice about me. Uh, she also says Adam's song was proper mental. Perhaps hinting at a genius we can't afford to overlook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then finally an email from Philip Coote. Uh, all right, guys, it was me what gave you the idea for Song Wars about downloading. So, you know, were Song Wars to continue, maybe we could say that the person who came up with the idea has a kind of more powerful vote. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like they could have ten votes. Oh, the I see. Power what you of mean. Ten votes. No, that's no good. Makes a certain sense, doesn't it? No, Ben. That no, makes that makes no sense. All right. Um, it makes me quite proud to have suggested the idea that game uh, that gave Adam one of his few wins, as he deserves to win this week and should. And this is whom my vote is for. Right. Well, he I, says we deserve a rest. Yeah. He says I think you deserve a rest. Oh, that's nice. That he is hopes nice. it's not a long one. I can't believe you've done this. So what's your song about? Take care, boys. Yeah, thanks a lot. Says Phil Coote. Thanks, Phil. I'll I'll tell you later. It's on. It's about something quite obvious. Um, so there we go. You know, it's not looking good for me at all. Right. Uh, having gone through the email. Well, you said you phoned it in a little bit last week. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't make much of an effort. I I didn't like my own song. Right. Thought it was irritating. Went on for too long. Really. And was a bit lazy. <sighs> Uh, but you know that's never stopped you winning before <laughs> <laughs> it's true so let's find out anyway let's this. have a record and then we'll we'll read the results here's the kinks with till the end of the what the day that's the kinks with till the end of the day this is adam and joe on six music we'll be back with the result of song wars after the news it's time for song wars the war of the songs a couple of tunes by a couple of proms so check it out uh, yes, it's time to reveal the results of last week's Song Wars. The theme was illegal piracy. 
Um, I did kind of an average bad one. Adam did an insane and quite inspired one. Yours was not, it wasn't average Let's and bad, Let's forget man. talking about mine. I like yours. Your I don't one. like mine. It made me chuckle. Mine's no good, you're wrong. Ah. Uh, um, it's very nice of you, though. Uh, so here are the results. Right. I'm gonna make, I'm just gonna rip a piece of paper. Yeah. And make it sound as if I'm opening, opening an envelope. envelope. Yeah. Again, we would not want to lie here yeah. on the BBC. Okay, oh. envelopes don't even sound like that. Yeah, they do. Come on, that they was don't. good. That sounded exactly like an envelope. Is Oh dear. Joe, I get 7%. 7. Adam gets 93%. Wow. You know, I worry for the people for that 7%. Yeah. For their taste. No, but on the other hand, you know, how much of mine was a sympathy vote after my pathetic juvenile strop behaviour? Quite a lot, I would say. No, I doubt it. Anyway, let's not uh, dwell on it any further, and let's have a listen to what uh, you voted for, listeners. This is my anti-piracy song, which, of course, incorporates the anti-piracy theme, the jingle, the sort of uh, national anthem of the anti-piracy uh, nation. Let's hear it now. I want to have a look at that film today, but I don't think I'm going to pay, because I'm bad and I steal, I don't care, I don't fail, and I'll take anything you got, and I'll put it in my pocket, yeah. I steal films, I steal books, I steal thoughts, I steal looks, I steal kids, well I don't steal kids, but I might. That's the mind of a pirate. Did you hear the hate and greed? And our beloved entertainment biz is where the dirty pirates feed. And I don't mean terrorists and their golden compass knockoffs. I mean you and your downloads. Oh, I ought to knock your block offs. How do you think this stuff gets made? You think artists create it, they don't get paid? It's the only reason they do what they do. It's not the flipping work. Most of that's poo. They depend on the money that you idiots give so they can make more crap and so they can live the good life. Yes, the life of the stars. But you're taking their pools and you're taking their cars, you bastards! Ha ha ha! You better believe it, pal! Cause we're evil, we're scum. Stick the law up your bum. We're gonna have a look at I Am Legend, it's crap. Then we're gonna have a party and we're gonna play some music and nobody at the party's gonna pay. Yes, the world is changing. I don't like it, but that's the way it is. So we've cooked up some statistics that will show you how you're ruining all the finely tuned mechanics of the entertainment biz. Every file that you download to your computer represents a physical purchase you would have made, possibly. And even if you're buying other stuff that don't make up for all the phantom profit that you've slaved. I don't care! Cause I'm mental, I'm evil, and I deserve to be locked up Cause I'm a horse, and I smell, and I want to go to hell Cause Satan's got free Wi-Fi everywhere, yeah And at the end of days, I'll download end of days Though because it is an old one, and it could take quite a while I might have to go and buy it anyway, yeah. What a load of uh, what a load of old rubbish! <laughs> You're an idiot. That's rubbish. <laughs> yeah. I hate you. And my song was better. Yeah, there you go. Well, thanks, thanks, listeners. Man, yeah, I appreciate that, lot, listeners. Nice to you know. On the one hand, it is nice to uh, get a bit of uh, props, bit of recognition there for my work for the anti piracy song. Um, but on the other hand, I know that that it was to a certain degree a kind of sympathy yeah. vote after yeah. weeks and weeks of having my face rubbed in the dirt. I don't mean to be rude, I just thought it was all getting a bit lovey-dovey before. Yeah, yeah, no. It's just not so interesting. Man, listen, while we are being lovey-dovey, I got a message from Johnny Greenwood from Radiohead the other oh, day. Oh, yeah. And he said, he, because he'd read on my blog that I was a bit grumpy about it all and everything, and he said, listen, sorry to hear you're grumpy, um, but uh, loving the Six Music show, I couldn't get Joe's right and wrong song out of my head all last week. Wow. Uh, he'd been humming it all last week. That's gonna ruin his head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's gonna damage one of the greatest heads in, <laughs> in, in show business. I saw a film called, uh, There Will Be Blood. Have you seen that one? Haven't seen it yet. No, Johnny does the music, exactly. of course. Exactly. That's yeah. why I mentioned it. Right. Uh, and I had no idea Johnny Greenwood did the music for it. I actually thought, um, it reminded me of some of the music that Kubrick, uh, uses in The Shining. Right. Uses quite a lot of atonal music. Mm. Uh, Lutus Slavsky, Slavsky, mm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. 
uh but then i realized it was by johnny greenwood and it's amazing mm. it's a fantastic film can't wait it's directed by pt anderson yeah yeah slice of uh, pta got... are you a pta fan mm, yeah kind yes of no. but 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 never as much as as after seeing this one right it's got an amazing performance by daniel day lewis right Oh, it's brilliant. Anyway. So there you uh, go. And, the, and really of course, cool. yeah, Genius School. So I thought I'd drop that in there, yeah. a little bit of name dropping for yeah. you with, oh, uh. That's a good bit of name dropping with it sort of covered in a thick layer of, um. Nice little complimentary a, a, yeah, machine to it. Yeah, compliments. That's yeah. my favorite early morning I thought, breakfast it, I, thought it, I thought it'd be nice just to wrap mm -hmm. things up, uh, in Song Wars wise, because we're going to give Song Wars a little bit of a rest, even though Joe's yeah. come in with his own song this week, which we'll hear later on. Um, when are we going to play that? In the next well, I hour? thought we could play it when we usually play the new, right. you know, because it might be a bit. We might might freak us out not to have anything in the last hour. In the in the in the last hour, yeah. Okay, in the last or half. The hour. middle hour, maybe. Right, right. So around about eleven thirty, sometime then yeah. we'll be hearing Joe's song. Um, but let's play some some real music now. Uh, even the, is the, oh, this is is this the new one from Adele? Yeah. Last week we put the old Adele out to pasture, yeah. uh, chasing pavements. It's become a big hit. It's number one and stuff we've already established that she's been lined up by the music industry to replace amy winehouse in case amy winehouse falls down a drain mm. or gets her head stuck in a in in a fence or even worse cleans up her act and suddenly finds that the muse has deserted her all those things would be awful exactly um so this is the new amy winehouse replacement uh she's called adele she's fine she's sober she's got fairly normal hair she's normal hair she's she's gonna be like that for up to three weeks she currently has no tattoos she's got a friend who freebases by the end of march her face it's is gonna true. be covered with <laughs> tattoos <laughs> so until she actually <laughs> spends a late night with that friend she'll be fine enjoy it while it lasts this is called writer's rain it's very nice indeed that's mm. uh writer's rain by adele this is adam and joe here on bbc six music this very sunny saturday morning here in london Hope it's nice where you are, listeners. Uh, now, Joe, have you seen the film Jumper, starring Billy Elliot? Not yet, no. Are you gonna, is that on your list? Yes. Is it? Yeah. Why, why would you want to see it? Because it's directed by Doug Lyman, who did the first Bourne film, and is a very good action director. Right. He also uh, did Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yeah, Mr. Sorry. Well, I, I know what you mean about that film. It's not that good, but it's it's impressive in certain ways. Is it? Yeah. I never made it through. Is it worth watching the whole way through? <laughs> not really, <laughs> but you know, it's sort of machine tooled. Yeah. In a, in 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 a quite an impressive way. Ruthlessly efficient. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I am looking forward to Jumper. I think it could be huge fun. Huge fun. I was thinking last night that nothing makes life worth living for me more than a than a stupid special effects film i don't care how bad it is yeah but what if the special effect as seems to be the case in uh jumper the sequel incidentally is going to be called <laughs> woolies cardi cardi um why would you want to see a film where like the main selling point is this kind of silly whooshy disappearing uh, whooshy. uh effect <laughs> whooshy. he's already hooked he loves it he loves it <laughs> but you know what i mean that the, uh, like a digital effect that you see in more or less any pop video or tv commercial this seems to be the hook for the whole film wouldn't it be amazing if all these people went whooshy and disappeared yeah, no but it's not the effect it's the premise yeah, but... Uh, the, the idea of being able to teleport instantly uh -huh. and what you do with it. And it sounds as if they've really thought about that premise. Oh, really? And extrapolated it, you know, in the cleverest possible ways. Ben's looking excited. Look at that. Look at Ben. He's grinning from He's ear to ear. He's never been so excited about anything. <laughs> That's going to be good. Come on. But in the in the Jump. trail, in the trail, you don't see anything that looks exciting. All you see is the washing. That's nonsense. A car comes out of the side of a building. Yeah. One minute he's in Times Square, the next minute he's at the pyramids. What do you want, Adam Buxton? Well, I want something that looks a bit more interesting. You than just that. want the next Harry Potter? No, because I'd love that. <laughs> can you, hey, can you get it for me? Dumbledore. <laughs> I didn't do it. I promise. <laughs> I love Harry Potter. The last one was good, the last Harry Potter. No, it was. Oh, come on, it was enjoyable. Um, but, no, I didn't see anything. Yes, yeah, so what, they're on a pyramid? It's like, yeah, anything's possible, and all we have to connect the dots on this mad, hey, no-rules hey, landscape okay, let me put something else is the whooshy effect. When was a trailer ever a good way to judge the quality of a film? Well, that's true, obviously, but... See the film, reserve your judgment. I think everybody should go and see Jumper. Yeah. On the day it comes out, and then we'll all have a big dirty skin style naked party oh skin disgusting. started again it's about to start but oh. let's not change the subject no 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 but you know i'd be more excited about jumper if it was about an actual jumper like a woolly really? jumper what would the story be well this guy's been given a jumper 
and it's it's a nice one it's a good one mm. right mm. and his mum's knitted what are the it special effects is it some kind of woolen portal you no know, here's the thing the special yeah. effects right you see the jumper being knitted uh -huh. but very fast oh so she knits it really much quicker than you wow. could normally knit a jumper and then at one point isn't wasn't that one of super grand's powers was it wasn't super grand able to knit things really fast possibly yeah, don't, bring don't bring me I'm down don't bring me down bring you down i know super but was very successful with the under five i never enjoyed super grand that much um you might be right about that but listen so at, towards the end of the s second act in the movie when things start to go wrong the jumper comes undone and you see it coming undone like a thread pulls out of the jumper. Does somebody at some stage go, darn it, darn it, darn it. And it's got two meanings. They're going to now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm write that idea down. I like that. Uh, and then towards the end of the film, it's okay. The jumper is fixed. Will the soundtrack be by Nitin Sawney? I like that idea too. Very yeah. good. Any other ideas uh, for my for my we'll film, which is going to be called Cardi? I think uh, I'd love to hear them from you and from the listeners. Help me out. We can make a lot of money here. Now it's time for more music. I picked this one for you, folks. This is uh, from Kevin Ayres. He used to be in Soft Machine years and years ago in the 60s and 70s with Robert Wyatt. And then he became a successful solo artist in his own right. And he's kind of part of the... Uh, pastoral folky psychedelic english music scene i suppose not to everyone's taste maybe but i really like this one particularly it's called blue hope you enjoy it did you just stick that singing on at the end yourself? that was me singing yeah <laughs> that's good it really gives it a lift at the end then. yeah thanks a lot that was kevin Ayers with blue bbc six, six. six music digital online bbc six music hey this is adam and joe <clears throat> excuse me here on uh, a saturday morning uh once again listeners i should remind you that i'm speaking in a slightly odd way because i have a bit of a cold so my voice has gone a bit wonkoid joe were you gonna remind yeah i was just gonna remind listeners of the of the text number it's six four zero four six you can text at any point during the show uh don't text in anything negative adam and i have had eye surgery this week that means we can't actually see anything hmm. negative right um which has really given given me a good week yeah have you had a wicked week yeah really good i i simply um i simply can't see anything that's you know not cheerful so what uh what do you do when you're watching tv that must cut out quite a lot of stuff there for you yeah i don't i can't see the tv right yeah. particularly channel four I it's imagine. also miserable exactly this is total <laughs> misery box channel four. that's what they should call it the misery channel box four channel four channel, channel, channel four oh oh didn't enjoy celebrity ding dong didn't watch celebrity ding dong quite enjoyed it did you? Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. We were discussing the phenomena that Channel 4 seemed to be making shows longer and longer and longer yeah, and longer. Yeah, it's 50. I didn't realise it was 50 minutes. I didn't watch that's, the whole thing. That's what thing. I read somewhere. It may, may, may not be true, but their big fat quiz of the year they do, which is very enjoyable. That's longer than uh, that's, Dr. Zhivago. Yeah, it is. It's about is it? two, or, two and a half or three hours long. Really? Something. The big ding-dong is 50 minutes so you say that's, that's a tv one hour that beggars belief i must say because i watched about 20 minutes which was perfectly yeah uh, serviceable 20 minutes but i can't believe that it went on another half an hour after that it's turning into french television do you, do you ever watch canal plus oh the canal plus yeah. Yeah. French, french television is just one show yes with four intellectuals and a singer in a white studio with an audience right. just discussing stuff yeah and then All occasionally the antoine de Cohn. He pops yeah. up quite a little bit. Yes. And he's talking French, and they always, uh... I like it. I like the French. Oh, it's nice. Nice. <laughs> anyway, yeah. No, I was going to say, uh, we should, we should hear some more music, actually. But, um, we've got the nation's favourite feature coming up, folks. Yeah. And... Um, that's official now. That's official. Well, it's not Song Wars, though, I'm talking about. I'm talking about Text the Nation. Yeah. Oh, right. no, what? that's what they're talking about. Oh, okay, okay. So the nation's favourite feature is coming up shortly, but first, uh, here's some more music for you. This is Block Party with The Prayer. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Text the nation time, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, this week, by way of setting up what we're going to be asking you to text about, I'd like to speak about the sarah chronicles terminator the sarah connor chronicles can i just very quickly say yeah before we get into that yeah uh, lindsay clegg thanks for your 
email. She's pregnant and a bit mental mm. because of it, mm -hmm. and she's angry that we didn't read her email out. Oh, about the jumper? Uh, no, it was a Song Wars-related email. Oh, right. But Lindsay, uh, thanks. And we did, we did read it. We got a lot of emails, and they were all wonderful, and there just simply isn't time to read them all out, otherwise it would turn into points of view. Yes, exactly. So, no disrespect, you know, if, if we don't read yours out on the air, but we appreciate all the emails and messages we get. Uh, so, yes, Terminator, the Sarah Chronicle, uh, Sarah Connor Chronicles. You see, that's problem well, one with it. A better name for it would be the Sarah Chronicles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Sarah Connor Chronicles. I mean, that is a mouthful, isn't it? Uh, yeah. The, the Sarah Conicles. The Conicles. Anyway, <laughs> we got invited to see the, the, the sc a screening of this, because it's going to be on, uh, what channel in the I UK? I think it's on, isn't it on Vir Virgin One or something? Right. It's, it's coming to the UK very soon, and it started airing in the US in mid-January. Started, yeah. Yeah, started airing on BitTorrent. Right. In mid-January. Um, no, it's a actually started going out. Oh, yes. In yeah. the US. Yeah. Um, but is available on BitTorrent currently and uh it's uh i only watched the first one uh and it was all right it's not too bad but they the, the main thing is like the the terminator guy they've got for it. and it's basically a extension of of the where where they left off with the second film rather than the third yeah. one i think because what happened at the end of uh rise of the machines uh nuclear war wasn't it the world was just was it? engulfed oh, in a nuclear really? firestorm. Everyone dies. It was very bleak. My love for the franchise yeah. died. Yeah, quite yeah. right. Hey. Danes, what was Danes doing in that one? I wish I could what manage What was Stahl Danes. doing in that one? Yeah. What was anyone doing in that one? What it, was Arnie doing in that he one? He was in there, wasn't he? Looking about a hundred. It was awful. That was stinker. just, that was just before he did, uh, became the governator, wasn't it? Yeah, no, you know, nothing makes me angrier than a, than a really poor sequel to a great uh, film mm. that really ruins the, you know, logic of the franchise. <laughs> Listeners, I can vouch for that. Nothing makes Joe more I furious. so angry. so angry. He hits me and, yeah, uh... I go to the Philippines and, and, and kill on, kills. on a private manhunting reserve. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's possible. If, if you're rich enough, you can do that. Mm. Uh, He's like Predator. Yeah. And he gets absolutely furious. He yeah. cries and he screams and he just hurts himself and everyone around him. So it's a horrible thing to see. But, uh, so maybe you should stay away from the Sarah Connor Chronicles because it is, uh, more or less nonsense. And the, and the, one of the worst things about it is the Terminator guy they've got looks just like a big dork who wouldn't get any <laughs> acting work elsewhere. Do you know what I mean? Like he's, maybe it's doing the guy down, but there's very little that needs to be done to fulfill the uh requirements of the part you know but you know that was what was quite good about the uh the the robot in terminator 2 the, yeah the, the nasty policeman one uh -huh. that he looked a bit dorky do you remember like yeah. he wasn't a big beefcake like arnie and if you were sending killer robots for, for backwards in time yes uh, it would be better to, to let them blend in you know well this is what they've done in this one because as well as the big hunky dork man who was the evil robot in the uh, tv version and incidentally, the only way that you can tell he's a robot, apart from occasionally seeing bits of his uh, metal exposed when he gets bashed up, he we he wheeze oil. He wheeze oil all when, of the screen. When he blinks, uh, it, he blinks sideways. He does. Um, when he farts, little iron filings come out. No, that's not true. <laughs> um, you can tell he's a robot because occasionally he just cocks his head a little bit, and that's what robots and evil people, incidentally, do. You know? Does he make little noises? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't, but occasionally, to set the scene, they tell you where, where everything is and what time of day it is. <laughs> I can't believe they're still doing I that. I know. People should have realised in the mid-70s that computers were going to no longer actually make noises when they merely produced font. Yeah. You know, text. I wonder if they ever did. <laughs> I'd like to find a computer that... It would be good to have that function on a computer that you could switch on. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so, so he's the evil guy, the big chunky man who cocks his head. But the, the, uh, Terminator sent to protect, um, the hero is a little girl, a young <gasps> woman. 
She's right. a teenage girl of sort of the correct age for possible romantic entanglement. Really? With the protagonist, yeah. So that's their big, uh, genius conceit to sort of move the thing on a little mm. bit. And it kind of works, and at the I same time... I wouldn't have sex with a, with a young lady robot. Why? You wouldn't know what was up there, whether you... it had been correctly smoothed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like popping your old fella into a, <laughs> into a fax machine. <laughs> You've all know. done that. It might be nice. At Everybody's first, but... done that. Oh dear me! What if it? What, what if you couldn't get it out? What if it got snagged on something? <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> well, exactly. And what? What if the wiring was was bad anyway, and you got a nasty no. little shock? Oh, I don't know. No, it's, it's fun at first, but <laughs> <laughs> it's no good. Well, this uh, all these problems are dealt with in Battlestar Galactica, of course, and as well. Is anyway, I digress. That kind of thing. Really? Do Look. people sleep with robots in Battlestar Galactica? Uh, that's what it's all about, man. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, Anyway, so I was wondering, listeners, about what other films it would be good to see turned into TV series, and uh, wondered if you could help us out by texting your thoughts. I had a couple of ideas. How about Seven, the series? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So it starts with Mills, played by Brad Pitt or whatever, whoever you could get, some rubbish actor who looks a tiny bit like Brad Pitt, getting out of prison. He partners up uh, with Somerset played mm. by Morgan Freeman, of course, in the film. And for the series of Seven, the tone is a little bit lighter than the film, okay? <laughs> and so there's a running gag. It's a sort of like a buddy cop movie. They go in there every week. They have a different case. And every every week, Somerset will tease Mills a little bit with a box, and he'll be chanting, What's in the box? And, uh, of course, rather than it being the head of a loved one in the box, it always turns out to be something fun. You know, like maybe a big mouth billy bass yeah or a beer that kind of thing just a fun gift yeah fun gift what because the, there are only seven deadly sins which have all been used up by the um by the film so yeah. there'd have to be some other structure for the it's just the days killings. of the week just days of the week. really yeah so every week there's always seven days of the week so it you doesn't... can start with the 12 days of christmas uh-huh yeah with the, yeah, yeah, and you get killed with like uh, yeah. five pipers piping. And yeah, exactly. It wasn't five, was it? It was however many. That would be for the Christmas leaping. edition. That's right. The lords yeah. are leaping and they leap right in your face. And <laughs> 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 wow, what would the crime scene be like after that attack? Top hats everywhere. There's clearly been lords leaping <laughs> all over the area. <laughs> um, so that was my idea, you know. And it would be fun. You, 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 you don't uh, guess each week what was going to be in the box. It's a little bit like finding out what flavor milkshake it's Al like Alberto it's like Frog deal or no deal would have in bod exactly that would be good a cross between people, seven and de deal or no deal people love anything box based so I'll, I'll give you some more ideas in a little bit but that was that was the I first think they one should do that i think in deal or no deal in one of the boxes should be the severed head of a relative <laughs> of the contestant <laughs> that would give it a bit of a, a sort of mid-show kick yeah definitely oh dear oh dear <laughs> you know and noel could do some amazing emoting with yeah, that kind of thing that as well good. that would that would certainly cheer the whole thing up so so text your suggestions to 64046 please listeners your idea for uh, your ideas for tv shows spun off movies obviously the more uh, stupid the better have you got another one or music time? i do let's have some music though first and then i'll give you a few more examples right now here's band of horses with no one's gonna love you stereo lab that's called miss modular uh it's from their 1997 album dots and loops that's one of their best ones yeah their, their last album was in 2004 was it? Yeah, Margarine Eclipse. They've got one coming out later this year. Apparently so, yeah. In fact, I got a request from their record company for us to interview them. Yeah, I saw that for a, some sort of a podcast. Yeah, they, they live very near us. Right, do they? Yes, yeah. they used to. They certainly used to live in yeah. South London, yeah. yeah. Would you be up for that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think, well, I certainly would. Yeah, they're fantastic. We love Stereolab. They're uh, geniuses, and hopefully they used to be uh, still, still very much in love. Now that they've split up, I think. Have they really? Yeah, Tim Gain and Letitia. It's a shame that they're not still very much in love. <laughs> but she's uh, happily That's ensconced in somewhere. It is a shame, isn't it's it? It's a shame. She's lovely. She you, is you lovely. lovely. Yeah. I would have slept, you know, slipped into bed with them. So would I. Tweak both of their nips. <laughs> <laughs> they would have liked that. That would have kept them together. That's a nice thought. Who would split up after that? Okay, Ben, I think it's time for the jingle. <laughs> Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. 
Now, Text the Nation this week is all about films that could be turned into TV series. And, that, and what we what we need from you listeners is to not only suggest the film, the more inappropriate the better, but what the mechanic of the TV show would be, i.e. how they would stretch the premise of the film out for an infinite number of series. Because no one goes into making a uh, TV adaptation of a film thinking, no. oh, well, it'll only be one series. And the main difference between a, a, a film narrative and a TV series narrative yeah. is you have to avoid it ending. Of course, you've got to keep In it open. Film, it's ending. important to work towards an ending Ev everything kind of comes from the ending yeah many writers write backwards from the ending right in tv very different no exactly You've just gotta end top li little trivial plots and then you get and and it's frustrating of course for the audience because the audience believes or would like to believe that the people creating the tv yeah. series have an ending in sight yeah, this is where many series go wrong the x-files yeah. uh lost may have gone wrong it might be coming back in the in, in the new season you mm. know uh, it's like that speech in Stand By Me, isn't it? Do you remember about when they're sitting around the fire and they're talking about wagon train? Mm -hmm. uh, and talking about the fact that they'll never get to wherever they're going. Yes, exactly. Similarly with the old uh, Battlestar Galactica series, when they never really seemed to find Earth. Yeah, yeah. And you'd be waiting for the, the episode when they did. And then it's a huge disappointment. Did it happen in the end? In the original season, mm. uh, series, I don't know. I think they did, didn't they? I can't remember. Maybe uh, someone out there could remind us whether they actually did find Earth in the original Battlestar Galactica. But uh, so here's a few more examples I had of movies that would be great, I think, as TV series. Um, you know, I, I didn't expand these ones, but what about Gandhi, the TV series? Yeah. What, what would he do week by week? Uh, he would peacefully protest. Yeah, that's basically it, isn't it? About stuff. <laughs> On Golden Pond, the series. Is that it for Gandhi? Yeah. What else can you think of in there? I don't know. He could he could get in some adventures. He, he could, could solve crime. He could travel forward in time. Most of my ideas involve some crime solving. I like yeah. it when people solve crime. Mm, well, crime's bad and it's it must be solved. Solved. So Gandhi would solve crime. And then on Golden Pond. What about Gandhi and Handy Andy? That's a good in idea. some kind of DIY show. That Handy is Gandhy. Handy Gandhy and Handy Just Handy. Just an idea. That's very nice. Handy Andy and Gandhi, and they solve crime, and there's some DIY. Yeah. And peace. And uh, on Golden Pond, mm. there's, they, they go and they uh, row on the pond, <laughs> and they solve crime. And uh, Pan's Labyrinth, the TV series. <laughs> well, hang on. You're just saying they solve crime. I know. Crime. I didn't. I hadn't that's really thought about the listeners up the garden path. That's true, isn't it? they just send those in, where, 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 that's going to be a disaster. All right. No, that's no what good. Have, come on. Think. What would happen in old, uh, old on Golden Pond? That's about, um, that's about an old couple fighting, isn't it? Yeah, and sort of coming to terms with their twilight years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess they, they get themselves fit. <laughs> he would die, he would die, very nearly die at the end of every episode. Right. But then just pull through. Well, here's the thing, here's a technique that they use in Lost a great mm. deal to spin absolutely everything out, of mm. course, which is the flashback. Mm. And of course, now in the new season of Lost, they're using the flash forward, but basically flashing either back or forward from right. when the action is set in order to stretch everything out to an infin infinitesimal length. Yeah. So I was thinking Titanic, the mm. TV series, right? Titanic, before the Berg, you could call it. I like it. And uh, the length of the voyage is stretched out ad infinitum for however many series you want with the use of flashbacks for every single passenger on board. Well, that's good because there's lots, aren't there? There's a lot of there's passengers. thousands. And so you just have it's flashbacks. When you run out of legitimate ones, they're st always stowaways. Exactly. Stowaways. Fish. And fish. The dolphins. Family members of the back home, you have their backstories. A couple of guys hiding in the funnels. The people that designed the ship. If it was really successful, you could take it down to the level of plankton and nits. <laughs> <laughs> the nits in the hair of the band that yeah. kept playing on. Yeah. Exactly. Brilliant. Uh, A Beautiful Mind, the TV series, which would be called Mind Games. Ooh. Uh, disturbed math genius John Nash every week teams up with the FBI and each week uses a new maths puzzle to solve a crime. Great. It's educational as well. That, exactly. that would be on in the morning. Uh, and yeah. it would have Wordy in it. <laughs> you remember Wordy? Words and pictures. Yeah, the, the, the weird orange number man with no legs that yeah. floats around the place. I do remember Wordy. Um, and also, uh, also, of course, you know, we're never quite sure in A Beautiful Mind, the TV series, whether it's actually happening or whether it's part of a breakdown. You know what I mean? It's It's got that added edge of uh, surreality to it. Hey, man, 
Uh, we've got to go to the news in a second, but first, here's a message from the boss. That's James Brown. You may have heard of him. He's a singer from America. That, that's called The Boss. Here's the news. That was The Beat with Too Nice to Talk To. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. I'm too boring to talk to. That's my problem. Mm. You know? Well, you're so boring they haven't written a, even written a song about you. No, exactly. Too dull to talk to. Uh, now I was with, uh, I've got my, uh, iPhone here, Joe. <laughs> you Just, never miss uh, an opportunity no. to tell us about your flipping eye. Yeah, I've got the iPhone here. Have you read uh, they're, they're reducing all the tariffs? Oh, I? Yeah. Mm, that's good. I, when I read that, I, a voice in my head said, <laughs> I hope Adam has to stay on the expensive tariff. <laughs> then I'll get one and it'll be cheaper and he'll be <laughs> sussed. <laughs> and then I read, uh, but existing customers will have their packages, you know, the, the price. Reduced. What did the voice in your head say then? Damn! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, a, it's one of these things that provokes a lot of, uh, fury in people. You know, I had a really strange conversation with a good friend of mine earlier this week and suddenly and we'd had a few drinkies actually and it was sort of late in the evening but uh i was, was this uh, this was dougie and i was eulogizing about my iphone and and uh, and talking about all the great features <laughs> apparently dougie's just written a song called too boring to talk to yeah that's true anyway he suddenly went totally nuts on me and just started coming out with this with this kind of digital race hate do you know what I mean? About what? About, about Max in particular. And um, just saying, oh, mum's so fed up of Max and iPhones and all them stupid rip-off products. He didn't say them stupid. But um, you know what I mean? Because like, uh, I was I, I was talking about the new, uh, they, they, like, Mac Their is just... stupid new... Yeah, well, it does seem to... The Mac Air. Yeah, they've Ooh. produced a, a new incredibly slim laptop. Yeah. But it does seem as if they've crossed a certain line because it's got no disk drive. Right. Uh, no firewire port or something. I'm not being accurate here, but it, they've skimped on some essential stuff. That seems just a bit gratuitous. Like it's it seems all... as if they've sacrificed actual usability for the sake of their idiot's sexiness. Yeah, but it's yeah, all... That's why he was upset. Maybe, maybe. No, he was just upset in principle. He said it's all just a big scam. It's all just a way of ripping people off to, to seduce them into buying newer, sexier products every every now and then. And actually, they've they're not... certainly got that down to a T, Mac. Yeah. In terms of exploiting that little gene in, in people's brains. People out there who use PCs and shun... Uh, Mac products mm -hmm. probably uh, won't kind of uh, understand this, but there's something a bit addictive about it, and they really know how to how to exploit it, don't they? Yeah, I mean, people people Steve get Jobs. really upset about it. It was the it was the most heated conversation I've had in quite a if while. If I'd been there, I would have been with Dougie. Would you? We would have ganged up on you and made you feel awful. Oh no! But you know, I I love uh, using my Mac and everything, and uh, I'm I'm certainly in the other camp. I mean, it's just opened up so many avenues and opportunities for me. I really, <laughs> I really love all that. Opportunities to surf the net. Yeah, but maybe I maybe I'm just a, a drone. I'm a, I've been seduced by all the curves and the sleekness, and I'm just a dork. Because, uh, but you've never used a PC before, though, have you? No. No. Why would you? Why would you? They're so ugly. They're so ugly. But here at the Big British Castle, we don't endorse any particular computer. We uh, or or indeed, um, what are they called? Abacus. No. Uh, any counting machine is fine here at the castle. In fact, they only use uh, an abacus here at the Big they British do. Castle. You're not allowed to use any form of computer. Or, or, or beads in bowls. <laughs> <laughs> the bead bowl. The bead have bowl. You, have you seen the new eye bead bowl? I'm I'm writing my a script with beads in bowls. Yeah. Mm, I've got a very big tray. How's it going? Fine, but I don't know how I'm going to get it to America. Yeah, it's going to take a while. Um, and when did you start writing the bead bowl script? 1383. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. It just tends to be a little faster when you're mm. using one of them new computers. Anyway, um, it's time for more music now, ladies and gentlemen. This is Laura Marling. What do we know about Laura Marling? Give me some Laura Marling facts. Do we have facts? Yes, her debut album, Alas, eyes. I Cannot Swim, will be released on Monday. So that's exciting, listeners. If you like this song, uh, you can pop a tenor uh, aside, and on Monday you can rush out to the plops and say guess that one please, guess the little mate. slice of that marling yeah. right there yeah yeah alternatively if you hate it you can go to the shops on monday with a little hammer and smash every copy you would you would You'll go be to, arrested you'd go to prison but it might be worth it if you really hate it <laughs> who knows <laughs> let's have a listen this is ghosts there we go that's laura marling with ghosts it's time to test our producer ben to see how fast he can produce the text the nation jingle 
Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. That was good. That was good. That was very fast. He didn't have any warning. He was right in there. Look at that cheeky, satisfied smile. <laughs> a little bit of a giggle. <laughs> Uh, incidentally, just a little call back to that Laura Marling track. She's going to be on Stephen Merchant's show uh, tomorrow or next Sunday. next Sunday. So not tomorrow, but the one after. Stephen is back tomorrow, though, right? He's back from his holidays, been away for a month or something outrageous. Uh, but he's back with you, listeners, from I go three till five. Yeah, yeah. Can uh, we go away for a month? One day we will. Yeah, when we get fired. In the summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's no, that... only, only a matter of time. Who would uh, fill in? Oh, we talked about this before. Chuckle Brothers. Chuckle Brothers. Uh, Tech the Nation this week is all about uh, TV series spin-offs from films. The most unlikely and uh, <laughs> nutsoid off the wall ones. Yeah, we kind of had to explain ideal. explain the guts out of it a little bit. Yeah. Here's my apocalypse one. Uh, apocalypse mm. now. Apocalypse mm. new. It's called mm. the missions of Ben Willard Jr. Right. Every week, the son of Captain Willard, uh, of course, the Martin Sheen character in the film, Ben Willard Jr., gets a new mission, uh, which is resolved by the end of the show. One week, he has to confront the school bully and terminate the bullying with extreme prejudice. Yeah. And in the climactic scene, he confronts the bully in a dimly lit locker room and listens to him spout. That's, that's terrible. There's garbage. no... What? what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, that was harsh. But what that's, new? that's weaker because, like, it doesn't have any of the trappings of the original film. It's not set in a jungle. Um, why Why would, if you're a fan of the film, why would you be drawn to, to like, a Wonder Years-style school thing that happened to have a lead character cause called... Because it, it's a mission. I don't know, because I thought maybe the thing about it was that it was, like, a mission and, you know, he meets all sorts of people along the way and he might be on a boat he might go on a boat there might be a boat trip if that's your problem <laughs> and then uh, like okay listen another week he has to visit his grandma she's gone completely insane and he has to that's terminate her with extreme prejudice that's horrible and she lives in a jungle all right happy <laughs> yeah that's better yeah it's good uh, so what what about, have we got anything from the listeners? Yes, there? we've got lots from the listeners. Here's one from Shar Miller in Colchester. She says, Titanic the serial. You had an idea for Titanic there, Adam. <laughs> Before the Berg. Shar Miller's it improved it slightly. After Rose dies and goes back to the Titanic uh, ghost ship every week, she and Jack have to stop the ship crashing into different objects, i.e. the Statue of Liberty, a school full of children, an iceberg full of spikes and excrement. <laughs> <laughs> Every week, the ship hits the object, and most of the show focuses on the sinking. Everyone dies, but it doesn't matter because they're already dead, because, of course, it's a ghost, ghost ship. ship. That's really very good. I That's love the idea of it hitting a different thing. Yeah. And the idea that, the you know, the writers wouldn't be constrained by any <laughs> sense of reality. Yeah. An <laughs> iceberg covered in spikes. Full of spikes and excrement. <laughs> That's a good wow. idea for a film on Charmilla, its own. Miller, you've got a powerful noggin. That's very good. Two and a half Robocops says Stefan in Brixton. Robo and his roommate Ed209 are trusted with the care of a mouthy orphan girl with a hilarious outcome. Yeah. Now that's quite good, isn't that it? That is good, yeah. I think it would probably just be a cheeky toaster rather than an orphan girl. Yes. Don't you think? Or maybe Orac from Blake 7. Or maybe half cheeky girl, half toaster. I like the idea of a sitcom inhabited entirely by, um... Robot. Well, Orac would be the the kind of uh, grandmother figure, you know, a sort of wise. C three PO could turn up for a cameo. That is a good idea. Metal Mickey could show up. Yeah. K nine, all the robots. That all the robots superb. would get together. It'd be a big deal to get all the rights. There'd have to be some serious conference table assemblies. It would sure. be anything's doable now in the in the doable. alien versus the predator world. The money to be made world. for everybody would be extraordinary. Absolutely. Wow. All the marketing and everything, and, yeah, that's a good that's idea. That's a great idea. Um, well done, Stefan, in Brixton. Very good. Um, here's another one. Uh, yeah, this will take some explaining, says Adam in Brighton. A spin-off from the Shawshank Redemption, set two years after Morgan Freeman has met Tim Robbins on the beach in Mexico. They're now living a frivolous life, sailing the oceans. They have a pet dolphin who helps them, you'll like this, <laughs> solve crimes. Yeah. And at the end of each episode, they will have solved the crime somehow using a tiny teaspoon in the most fascinating <laughs> and jaw-dropping manner. <laughs> there you have it. That's says the, the tiny the teaspoon that Tim Robbins digs himself out of. That's the, right. Uh, and maybe a big poster of, what was the poster of? It was some film, wasn't it? Oh. I never... A I lady ne poster, wasn't I never it? bought that. Did you not? No. That the guards wouldn't look behind the poster? Well, that nobody at any point over all those years leant casually against the poster and yeah. fell through the hole. Why would they? Why would they be in the cell, though? The guards don't generally go in the yeah, cell. Yeah, they do. Guards can go where they want. 
Well, they do when they turn over Prisoners the place. are constantly bumming each other and what? bouncing off the walls. <laughs> it's all they ever do. Yeah. Shooting up drugs. They're constantly <laughs> bouncing off the walls. There's nothing else to do. Yeah, but you're not going to bounce off the wall of your own cell and ruin your lady <laughs> poster covering the escape hole. No, I don't know, man. I mean, it's a brilliant. I film, was in but... prison for a long time, and, when, <laughs> and uh, let me tell you, you can cover almost anything up with a lady poster. It's not a problem. Um, that's a good idea, though. And also, I think you'd be missing a trick if you didn't have a scene every week where he has to crawl through excrement. Do they do that in the short? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they? yeah, very memorably, like a long tunnel. Each week, the tunnel gets a little <laughs> bit longer, and there's different stuff because it, it could be like uh, I'm a celebrity, get yeah, me out of here. That's you know? true. I like the fact that you would always be thinking, how are they going to work an excrement tunnel into this narrative? <laughs> there could be one set in the desert, one set in space, and you'd be thinking, wow, how are they going to work it in? What's that floating towards us? Looks like some kind of tube. Some kind of tube. <laughs> Let's investigate. <laughs> do you really think we should? After last week. <laughs> um, let's have some more suggestions in a little bit. Right now, here's a, another piece of music that I've chosen for you, listeners. This is from one of my all-time favorite albums, from one of my all-time favorite people. It's uh, it's Daz Sampson. <laughs> uh, no, it's Chico time. No, right. it's David Byrne, uh, and this was, I think, his first solo album uh, after leaving Talking Heads, after splitting Talking Heads up cruelly by fax. Um, he went off and he did a kind of world music album. And uh, it was mainly Latin rhythms he was investigating there. And this is one of my favorite tracks from that album, Ray Momo. And the track is called Lie to Me. Hey, hey, hey. That's, uh, that's hey. A-Punk a with Vampire. No, no, Vampire Weekend with A-Punk. Have you listened to that album yet, Joe? No, that's the new big thing, isn't it? Yeah. Vampire Weekend. It's good, man. Yeah, we took that. We got sent freebies of that. Uh, did we? Uh, yeah. We did. Yeah, you yeah. were going to leave yours behind. You tossed it aside. Yeah, but Adam, Adam. Well, it did add a. It had a very poorly taken photo of a chandelier on the front. <laughs> I know. You'd think someone would have checked that. Casting a nasty that. shadow. It's that it should have had a, like a, a, a Kodak sticker on it. So yeah. This album cover is rejected, but apparently it's the latest thing. Uh, that would be a good idea. Has anyone done that? Put the Kodak sticker on the front of a crappy photo for an album? It. You'd think. You'd think. Come on, bands. You've got to sort your lives out. Come on, out. bands. Pull your fingers out. Pull you, will you pull your fingers out and uh, wash them before you do anything, please? Yeah. This is uh, Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Do we have any, any more uh, yeah. texts before we wrap up yeah. Text the Nation? A week, it's, it's nearly 11 uh the top of the hour is a special time on radio there's sometimes news there's something called a sweeper what's the what is what the is function of the sweeper it's just to let people what's know that, that it's around about 11 o'clock right is that it, ben? Yeah, it's just to get that have we got one of those coming just up just to give structure to add structure so, we got yes, remind people it's, uh, six music. so in 25 in 20 seconds we got to do that what happens if we miss the sweeper it just automatically kicks in now really <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> while we're speaking it's um, we've got we've got terrific text coming in lots to read out it's going to be really great um 10, ten seconds joe's seven, obsessed seven with the sweeper now he's worried uh, if we miss uh, it text six four be... zero four six three seconds two seconds uh geez. bbc <laughs> six music on digital online bbc six music is that it? Yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste of time. Really nicely hit you, though. You, yeah. You've got that. That sweeper. means it's 11 o'clock. Exactly. Guys. 11 o'clock. Have you got any text there that you can read out immediately, or should we have some more music and then wrap it up? Uh, uh, let's have some more music. Nice little bit of music. How, what are your feelings on the Julian Cope mm -hmm. situation? I'm sorry, once again, it's listeners, right. I apologize about my voice. It's sort of annoying. I don't like it when people have uh, uh, voice problems like this, you know, because I always think they're putting it on. Really, do you yeah. want me to get? Uh, do you remember the film An Anaconda? Yeah. If I got a baro and gave you a like tracheotomy, two tracheotomy, would that help? Yeah, that would be ideal. All right, we'll do that during the next song. Uh, yeah. So here's a little slice of Julian Cope for you. Is this, uh, uh, oh, trampoline. This one is yes, trampoline. So this is sort of mid. Uh, yeah, mid mid period, nutty Cope, isn't it? This is bef this is after he'd got himself back together again a little bit. But was still fairly demented. Uh, and, uh, yes, trampoline, Julian Cope. See, he uses the word to, to mean two things there. Mm. It's not only the bouncy, uh, fun spring based, uh, piece of cloth. <laughs> it's also. That's like, what it says on the, if you buy a trampoline, that's what it says on the package. Yeah. Bouncy, fun, spring based piece of cloth. Mm. Uh, it's also the idea of being trampled mm. by maybe women. Maybe the system. He's writing the song from the point of view of the cloth. Yeah, exactly. That's I can't important. believe you're trampling me. Yeah. I may be called a trampoline. Might be fun for you, but you're really stretching my central tummy area. Exactly. Repeatedly. You're stretching my credulity, my patience. 
my springs in any second now i'm gonna hurl you off into the garden make you land on the lawn and break your leg yeah exactly if you're lucky if you're lucky it could be worse yeah they're lethal those things they are lethal Gotta have a net around them if you were a rich man with a big garden would you have a big trampoline there uh yeah i'd have a series of trampolines i'd use it to get from my main house to my pool uh they'd be about <laughs> seven or eight meters apart <laughs> and i'd jump out of my bedroom window and i'd have them perfectly lined up and i'd boing yeah and land in the pool a various size you could just boing around and they'd be yeah. at different sizes yeah, yeah, you yeah, could yeah, boing yeah, up yeah, the stairs yeah, instead yeah, of having yeah. stairs mm -hmm. just have uh trampoline stairs mm. i saw a brilliant trampoline based video this week you know oh I, yeah i host this thing at the uh, bfi stroke mm. nft it's a forum for pop videos we show a load of bug. excellent pop videos bug bug yeah book now for march always gets sold out mm. um but we showed a brilliant one by this guy called real Vuters mm. um for a band called Z, just z z z and uh it's all one shot from above a trampoline um and it's it's he's sort of basically exploring all the various cool trippy effects you can get from having people jumping around in various ways on mm. trampolines i recommend you check it out listeners what's the track called did you just say uh, i can't remember what the track is called the band is called Z Z Z. the guy is called okay. rule vooters yeah but no one can put that into a search well no you you type in r-o-e-l and his surname is w-o-u-t-e-r-s rule vooters and if you type that in and go to his website he's got some amazing stuff there well mm. worth checking out do you have a couple of little texts well we'll do those in a second maybe okay um, you're going to introduce yeah, your yeah, yeah. this thing, is yeah. a, this is a free play and this might be a bad idea listeners but this is six music right uh -huh. people are, are supposed to like music adventurous and, yeah isn't it? this is um uh, many of you may have been to see the film sweeney todd tim burton's adaptation of sweeney todd uh the demon barber of fleet street right uh, and it's a pretty good movie. It's based on the musical by Stephen Sondheim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's something of a genius. But Burton does a weird thing. He leaves out the title track, uh, which is a really famous and fantastic and scary song, uh, the theme of Sweeney Todd. He completely omits it. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, some people generally are freaked out by this film, not because it's gory, it is quite gory, but because they don't realise it's a musical. In the trailer, they hardly hint that it's a musical. Yeah. And apparently lots of people are standing up and walking out. Oh, really? Because they just can't believe that people are just singing the whole time. And they sing more or less all the time, don't they? More or less. Yes. Yeah. There's some little dialogue exchanges. But, you know, that's what proper musicals are all about, yeah, really. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway, the music is amazing and sometimes kind of a genius. And I thought it would be good to play the song that Burton inexplicably leaves out. Apparently he filmed it, but didn't use it. Maybe because it's the only time where the characters actually sing into the lens mm -hmm. to camera. And he thought that was too eggy. But this song is wicked, man. We'll be on the DVD extras. Though, Maybe, it? and it's genuinely frightening. And it's the theme tune. It's like leaving out the song Chichi Chichi Bang Bang from Chichi Bang Bang Chichi Chichi. Right, it's all Greece. From Greece, from Greece, yeah. Why would you do that? Why would you? Uh, this is the Ballad of Sweeney Todd. Hello, I'm Michael Ball. This is uh, BBC Hi. Three, and I'm here with my guest Joe Cornish. He's Hi. going through some of his favourite musicals yeah. there. Why did you pick that one for us, well, Joe? Well, I just love the costumes. Mm. I love the stitching, the seamstressness, the dressing. I just love musicals. The I shouting, love musicals the pointing, too. the tiny seats, the Maltesers. Mm. I love the theatre. I love Sondheim. Do you? Yes. Can I say that you're looking very 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 attractive i've got six nipples have you you can have two of them and that's my favorite spare. number of nipples i've got no use for them at all wonderful stuff i suckle piglets sometimes <laughs> on a farm <laughs> well thank uh, you sorry if that insulted your ears but you know that it, was it's, good it's, it's a bit like um what people say when they do things charity things you know if one person enjoyed that yes then it's worth doing. And you know, one person did enjoy that. <laughs> Me. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Thanks. They, I had, um, Matt Stone, right, that does South Park. Yeah. They went to visit Stephen Sondheim mm -hmm. in his New York apartment after they'd made the South Park film. Yes. Because that was a musical. Uh, Absolutely. With a very mem number yeah, of very memorable number of, songs. Uh, and Sondheim was suitably impressed, so they went to meet him. He's quite old. Uh, and he's he's a gay man, a man that likes uh, uh, other men's bits and bobs. Uh, they said he had the most amazingly attractive sort of 21-year-old boyfriend. Did he? Yeah. Good old Sondheim. They were deeply impressed. Nice going. That a man as old as that could, through the power of music, yeah. 
attract uh, a young a well, young there's nothing more attractive than success <laughs> and talent it's true props to steve what other musicals has he done what are his into the woods uh-huh. yeah mm. <laughs> <laughs> lots of them he's good he, high school he the musical he did high school musical too that's yeah, true yeah yeah and he also did uh some of the songs for the secret of nim <laughs> <laughs> Nim. Uh, okay like Nim. uh it's time for a hub session now we're going to wrap up text the nation after this folks or, or very shortly thereafter anyway uh but before that here is primal scream they're bad boys they're, they're dirty and they come from uh scotland but they're gonna do a talky introduction to this yeah and you can hear from the tone of the man's voice that they just don't care they just they do don't not they don't give care. a job they don't give a fig if you want a fig off bobby gillespie he won't give listen you one to, listen to he's this. not going to give you one this is from 2006 that's primal scream uh recorded in 2006 for for the six music hub sessions and they were singing country girl there of course let's have the jingle then Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. And uh, yeah. Sorry, mate. Yeah, you carry you, you on. Go, you no, go. You go. No, would... you go. All right. The theme for Text the Nation this week, folks, is um, inspired by... I can't believe you went. Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles. That's so rude. The Chronicles. It's interrupted me. And uh, it, we're asking you to suggest movies that should be turned into TV series and what those series would be like. Chris Eccles suggests christopher eccleston christopher eccleston that's exciting suggests a tv series based on falling down <laughs> yeah this would be an extension of the film falling down uh but it assumes that michael douglas's character didn't die where he gets more and more angry about life and stuff throughout the series culminating in him detonating a nuclear bomb in la because he's so cross fair enough there a little um, bit Chris. like heroes I, I would suggest that you steer away from the ending there yes and that he just gets angrier and angrier and angrier and angrier without any kind of end yeah and you sort of can't believe <laughs> at the end of each series can he get any angrier <laughs> yes he can and that's why you tune back in and the angrier he gets the smaller the things are that make him angry <laughs> do you know what i mean yes exactly. so those two narrative strands they go in opposite directions. I'd watch that. Oh, that's a good that idea. That would really vent a lot of spleen for a lot of people. That would be brilliant. And sp speaking of which, um, what was the, who was the guy that texted in earlier on to correct us about Lost? Well, he wasn't correcting us, but he was reminding us that everybody knows exactly when Lost is going to end. It's going to end after six series. 2010. 2010. Mm. They know where it's going. There's no question they're making it up as they go along like a collection of ludicrous ponces. And uh, everything is fine in the mythical world of Lost. So what else have you got there? Nick Carver um, says uh, Taxi Driver, the TV series. It's yeah. called Taxi Driver colon Road Trip. <laughs> Travis Bickle travels from town to town in his taxi. You'll like this bit, solving various crimes. That's a good idea. <laughs> and dealing out vigilante justice before heading off into the sunset at the end. Each episode opens with Travis looking into the mirror and talking to himself, <laughs> explaining the story that will follow. It ends also in front of the mirror as he wraps it all up. Brackets, that, perhaps telling a joke. Close brackets. That's a very good idea, because I've noticed that uh, Terminator, the Sarah Connor Chronicles, has this as well. A lot of shows end with a bit of voiceover with some mm. kind of aphorism or thought for the day do you know what i mean yeah tv viewers the simple-minded folk heroes does that in a really yeah. maddening way travis's resourcefulness in the film shown through the fabrication of his slidey gun hiding device will be spun out into a more macgyver like ability to overcome obstacles with random objects that's good so there's a sort of inspector gadget <laughs> element to it every time he gets into some probably underage prostitute based pickle which <laughs> let's face it let's face it we all do every now a and then tra a travis pickle S a travis pickle <laughs> <laughs> Something pops out from somewhere. No, <laughs> move on. Uh, that's yeah, a very good idea. Who was that one from? That was from some bloke. What was his name? Uh, it was from Nick Carver. Thank you very much, Nick. That was yeah, excellent. we've had a couple of uh, 2001 based suggestions. Yeah, let me find them here. They came in via text. While you're finding those, can I just give you a couple more of mine? Yeah. Um, Starsky and Hutch. Now, just bear with me. This might sound like an insane idea. Well, it's already done the leap from small to big screen. You're what? you're suggesting? What are you talking about? <laughs> you're suggesting popping it back in the. What do you mean? On the small screen. Well, you know that amazing film with Ben Stiller and Luke <laughs> Wilson, right? Yeah. That would make a good TV show, yeah. don't you think? Yeah. But instead of playing it for laughs, you do it 
uh, quite seriously and every week they solve crimes and they drive in their car what about that that's a very good idea yeah <laughs> Go on, then. Uh, that is yeah okay t- uh here's one i think this is from ian in birmingham it's a it's anonymous uh, but he says, how about a TV show from the film 2001? It's all about the adventures of the Black Obelisk mm. and its travels. It's a cross between Lassie and Quantum Leap. I like the idea of the obelisk as a kind of cute, you know, smooth, silent, uh, immobile kind of uh sure he turns up in different places every week and inspires different uh magical events around him there's that noise through the whole episode because the the obelisk turns out to be full of universes doesn't it in 2010 uh the year we made contact directed by was it peter hyams yeah i think so Um, uh yeah that's what happens they they basically tell you it's full of stars i like that film uh, so, yes, he, he could sort of go out doling out universes in various different parts of the uh, universe. But David from Braintree has a different angle on 2001, the TV series. He says, 2001, a TV odyssey. Hmm. Dave Bowman and his cheeky robot sidekick, Hal, discover a new monolith each week and are sent on a, on a quest to discover the meaning of existence. Every week features Hal trying to kill Bowman in an increasingly comic style, with Dave then tripping out for the remaining minutes of the episode. That's a good idea, you see because uh lots of monoliths they've each got something different inside them each week yes candy yeah one week you know uh puppies another week exactly and sometimes it's something more profound the meaning of life and it has a connection it connects into you know tic tacs maybe well this is coming back to the whole thing about boxes which we know Mm -hmm. is is a a solid gold way of of generating interest for a tv show if you've got a box or an object with a mysterious thing inside it people want to know what it is Here's a good one uh, from Daniel Johnson, Johnston in Sheffield. He says the Kaiser Soze Chronicles. Every week they set up a complicated plot, then reveal at the end that he was just making it all up. Yeah. I wonder if that's Daniel Johnson, the musical, the tortured musical genius. Probably. Yeah. Uh, another one? Yeah, go on. Give us one more. Before Lord of the Rings. Frodo and Sam realise their obvious feelings for each other and every day deal with prejudice against two hobbits in love. That's very nice. So that's it's a like sort of Will and Grace with hairy-footed midgets. <laughs> <laughs> not, not majorly different. I could be in it. You could be in it. Yeah. That yeah. would be nice. Uh, thank you very much indeed for all your texts and we emails. We might have some more in a bit, might we? If something if something uh, amazing comes through, but I think we should probably wrap up texts. Because we've got to play your song we've got to play your song we've got that hours done. left. We've got 35 minutes left. Wow. The Wicker Man Game Show. D-list celebrity dropped off on Spooky Island in an airplane. Island populated by creepy actor types. That's, That's a, quite good, isn't it? Like the Crystal Maze. Is it a game show or a series? A bit of both. Right. It's a. It's a. What do you get? What? Uh, what? What's a hybrid of a game show and a series? A gamesries. Uh, a a seer show. I don't know, but that's a hybrid that hasn't been done yet. A narrative, the narrative game show. Why hasn't anyone done that yet? Ah, Noel Edmonds, man, he could do that. He's probably been working on it. That's a good idea. This is going to happen, like, if we're sat here in two years' time, there'll be a narrative game show on TV. That must have been done before. Who is it? Someone else, uh, speaking of which, someone else pointed out, I was talking about the idea of uh, putting those Kodak advice labels on an album cover for a deliberately deliberately rubbish photo deliberately deliberately someone says uh, Tim has uh, texted us to say or oh, the all-seeing eye had a Kodak advice label on the cover of the beat goes on pip pip che- uh, cheers Tim thanks very much for that now it's music time and this is what is this oh yeah we're gonna have a trail this is an exciting oh no I'm in the trail Oh, we don't want to be late for the news. This is Licky Lee with Little Bit. It's got a nice sound to it, though. That's, uh, that's Licky Licka Lee with Little Bit, which, confusingly, she also pronounces Little Bit as well, doesn't it? She's trying to get her name in there as well. Um, she's new on the scene. That's, that almost sounds like one of our Song War songs. <laughs> Don't you think? In a good way, I'm not saying yeah, it's like yeah, a yeah. little yeah, rubbish yeah. like our ones, but uh, that was nice. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's time now for the news. That's Elbow with Grounds for Divorce. Is that a new one from Elbow there? Yeah. Um, that's good, isn't it? It's one of those, he's taken that uh, route that a lot of people take every now and again, just for the sake of it, of the convicts, you know, the kind of... Um, spiritual music you get kind of oh brother where art thou type thing yeah it's not up my street adam is it not be perfectly honest no you're not having a slice of garvey no oh okay uh that's joe uh, is that a bad thing to say nothing personal it's just not have you seen garvey no i'm sure he's a lovely he's a bear of a man he could flatten you 
I'd take him. No, he would get you no, instantly. I would, man. Also, you don't know my technique. Yeah, but he could crush you with his mind as well. I fight dirty. Listen, he would start off. Garvey would come at you with his mind, and when then I he say would say dirty. I mean porno sexually. Mags. <laughs> yeah, I have lots of porno mags, <laughs> yeah. and I just flash them, and yeah, you roll them up, and you they get distracted oh. by all the stuff on display. That's good. Listen, um, you might remember years ago on this show we used to have a feature called song wars mm. and about well about this time we'd sort of be reprising the songs about this time you might have heard this jingle it's time for song wars the war of the songs a couple of tunes by a couple of proms so check it out but not anymore because we've stopped it um it's having a little break it's having a break and you know, I was resistant to the idea when it was first mooted uh -huh. at the beginning of our tenure here at the castle. We'd done some songs when we filled in for um, um, Sean Keaveney on the breakfast show, but we did one a, one a week over over five shows uh, to carry on doing one a week. I resisted, but 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 then you know when we started doing it regularly, I started to enjoy it. Mm. I started to take pleasure in it. If it wasn't about the winning and losing. It was about the, the act of creating something and then, you know, having a, a, a marginally appreciative audience to, to play them to. Yeah. And when it stopped, it was very sudden. And like a bicycle going down a hill, I found it very hard to break, to stop. Yeah. You know, there's still a lot of momentum. I don't know what the physics of it is. You've still got songs to sing. I've still got songs to You've sing. You've got a lot of music in so you. So on, on the Monday, on the Tuesday after the, sh after the show, I was sitting at home typing away writing this thing and i was getting a bit bored of writing and usually when i was bored of writing i think well i have a little nibble at, at a song yeah uh you know keep the juices going so i i had to do it anyway it just got to come out sometimes just, and this is this is a, it's only short but this is a composition that expresses my um my my sadness my melancholy sort of elegy for song wars. an elegy for song wars yeah it doesn't doesn't have a name uh, it's, it's a song, well, I suppose it's a song for Song Wars. Yeah, end of part one. Yeah. Of it, Song Wars. Here, here it is. No more Song Wars. No more Song Wars. Song Wars is over. Song Wars is over. Au revoir, la guerre des chansons. There won't be any Song Wars anymore. It started out as a game we played. You'd write a song and I'd reciprocate. We'd play the songs, let the listeners choose It ain't a competition if nobody loses Twelve weeks later and the score's eight four I get the feeling you don't find this fun anymore So we say No more song wars No more song wars song Simply delighted to hear We'll no longer be shopping our songs in your ears No more amateur crap from a couple of <laughs> What, a couple of deers? A couple of deers Um, that's very moving, man you sort of abandoned it at the end there, <laughs> didn't you? Well, I didn't want it to be too long. You suddenly, I, I could tell that, all, that it was very emotional at the beginning. And yeah. then suddenly you just abandoned the emotion and you thought, oh, listen, I've got a duty to amuse people and entertain here. Yeah, I don't like to expose my heart. This is the schism at the heart of the whole yeah. Song Wars exercise, though, isn't it? What, between sincerity and stupidity? Exactly, between, listen, when I was putting together my anti-piracy song, mm. there was tears rolling down my cheeks. <laughs> 
why no there wasn't but um i i, I at one point i had a three and a half minute cut of the song wow. right that'll come out on the mm. uh, extended mm. edition box set one day mm. but it was good man i'm telling you right now not not so much the bits with the anti anti piracy chorus song and not those bits but there were some amazing bits and i got really into it and um it was quite it was quite wicked stuff well, I'm gonna. We're gonna find out a way of of making uh, the Song Wars archive available. Um, we're not gonna ask people to pay for them, but we're gonna somehow figure it out with the um, the bearded alchemists here at the Big British Castle. A way to make a little site where they can be downloaded for the one or two people um, in mental homes that might be interested. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll figure something out. We'll let you know what happens. So that's it for Song Wars for the time being, though, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll find something else to do in the meantime. And we may, you know, we'll bring it back as and when, isn't it? Sometimes it'll be, you'll just have a bit of music that just has to come out. And then we'll, we'll do it. Um, but until then, here's some more proper music for you. This is Morrissey with That's How People Grow Up. That's Morrissey with That's How People Grow Up. This is Adam and Joe here on uh, BBC Six Music. So the Oscars are coming up, Adam. <laughs> oh, good. It's exciting, And, isn't and it? it looks as if they're going to happen, right? Uh, yeah, well, but fingers crossed, it looks like the writer's strike might be resolved. Everyone else has resolved their strikes. The directors have. It's starting to look a bit embarrassing for the writers and the, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. You don't want to hear this waffle from me, do you? But anyway, listen, uh, here's the point. That What if you were a famous actress? Uh, yes, I'm trying to imagine. What would your name be? <laughs> Oh, something sexy, but, uh, you know, intelligent. Right. Um, uh, Cindy Maths. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking Titty Genius. Titty Genius. And what would you speak like? Um, I would talk like this. Oh. You're quite a low voice, so people took me seriously. Okay, imagine you're nominated. Yes. Uh, and of course you subscribe to the Sky Satellite Service, therefore you get the Sky Mag. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and you turn to Sky Mag, and, and, and there's an article in here all about what to do to prepare for the Oscars if you're an actress. Right. All right. Uh, you already have booked a top hairdresser, whittled your dresses down to a handful of choices, nabbed yourself an uber makeup artist, and upped your exercise routine, correct? Yes, my abs are hard now. <laughs> okay, here's some more advice. Celebrity trainer Kathy Kohler tells her clients, <laughs> including Julia Roberts and Michelle Pfeiffer, to cut out sugar, salt, and alcohol in the week leading up to the Oscars. Certainly. This this is to avoid bloating to achieve a lean look. Last year's Best Supporting Actress winner Jennifer Hudson slimmed her figure before the ceremony with a diet of smoked salmon and vegetables. Yes, that's <laughs> what I've been doing. <laughs> okay, well, that's not the end of it. Yeah. Uh, while they're purifying themselves on the inside, the ladies of Beverly Hills will also set about buffing, polishing, waxing, and, whisper it, injecting themselves. Nobody wants that dreaded sweat patch beamed to millions, so many actresses have Botox injected into their armpits and palms to stop them perspiring. I didn't know Botox did that. Celebrity dermatologist Dr. Jessica Wu says this is the must for the hot, stressful red carpet. Quote, for actresses so they don't stain their dresses, and for actors who don't want clammy handshakes. Nobody likes to stink. Okay, let's recap. You've whittled the wardrobe, you've got the Uber makeup artist, uh, you've cut out sugar, salt, and alcohol. You've fused all your pores <laughs> shut forever. You've injected your armpits and palms with Botox. That's not the end of it. Uh, Ole Hendrickson, <laughs> facialists at Charlize Theron and René Zellweger, uh, recommends gals should have a facial seven days before an event so there's time for the inevitable breakouts to heal. Right, okay. So seven days before you've got to have the breakout. Oscar attending ladies will also spend this week being given free stuff. Celebrities like Nick and Tuck, Tuck, what? Nip and Tuck's Kelly carlson uh -huh. can pop along to special lounges all over town and nab free products and services worth up to half a million pounds is that just called stealing N no i think they're allowed to oh it's the way you said nab sure. i thought they were just running around nicking stuff and not, people, i'm quoting people from sky mag look we've just been robbed by kelly clarkson or whatever so you're was. busy yeah and finally carrie wan Hairstylist to Nicole Kidman recommends ladies have no hair days to give their manes a rest from styling this week mm. so it's ready for the blitz of the big night. And you've got to get plenty of sleep. Early nights go a long way to repairing skin and making red carpet walkers look refreshed. Wow. That, I don't want to go anymore. It's like sort of the restoration or something for, for women. Yeah, that's horrible. You know? What do men have to do? Men don't have to do anything. They just turn up and... No. If you're James Gandolfini... 
just carry on having, yeah, you know, just have a burger. Yeah, you sleep in, a, in, in the street the night before. Yeah. Yeah. And, and no one says anything. Um, yeah, with your head resting on a Jack Nicholson clock. is not sealing his flipping paws, I'll tell you that much. No. It's, it's men are lucky. We really don't have to bother. That's terrible, isn't it? How would you have a good time? You would not in any way have a good time. There'll come a day when people don't bother with that thing anymore, right? Yeah. Yes, you reckon. You, yeah, people... habits will change. It's like people used to dress up smart for work. Soon, yeah. soon they won't bother. And I, I can't wait for that. Day. They'll just turn up in t-shirts. But then yeah. you'll, you'll, it'll be sad, you know, you'll miss the dresses. Who are you wearing? <laughs> Dunno, just t Tommy t-shirt. Yeah, it'd be good to turn up actually wearing a person, wouldn't it? <laughs> but if, if Gunnar Hansen from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre won an Oscar, who are you wearing? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know her name, but it's just a woman. she stumbled into my house last <laughs> night. I gutted her like a fish. <laughs> I'm very nice. I'm mainly wearing. Uh, uh, okay, now here's a song that I requested be added to our playlist this week. I really like this one. It's Hot Chip with Ready for the Floor. Hot Chip with Ready for the Floor. That's a good example of a guy. No disrespect to the bloke, but he hasn't got the best voice in the whole world. You know what I mean? Like he's, not, he's not a classic, uh, soulful voice. But still, he manages to get some real emotion out of his little boxes of tricks there, and his own voice as well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Love that one. Uh, and that's pretty much it for us this week, ladies and gentlemen. Liz Kershaw is waiting in the wings. Yes, yeah, she's sitting the other side of the the double glass, looking like some kind of a sexy mermaid lounged on the sofa. That's right. Uh, she's got very low cut top. I'm um, just making that up. <laughs> making You're that fantasizing. Yeah. And we're just about to go off and record some, uh, introductions for our podcast, of course. Yeah. Don't forget that's available on the Adam and Joe page on the BBC Six Music site, or it's now available each week on iTunes. I think it goes up on a Monday morning, does it, Ben? Or does it go up sooner than that? Monday morning. Monday morning. There you go. And I was being a bit sound queeny this week because I found out that I listened right, to them so. the other day and I didn't realize they were just mono. The BBC is such a bureaucratic um place i i that i love it yeah that, that, <laughs> I, that's what i that's where i was going with that no but one of the little annoying things is that it's like it's the 60s and they've decided that they're going to do mono podcasts and to get that changed you have to i don't know sleep with gordon brown or something there might be some revisions to the whole way podcasts are sent out from the bbc but at the moment it's mono which is frustrating for me because i took a while to make some nice little stereo jingles yeah, there and all the song or songs are in stereo and they sound Come a little on, bit bbc wake thin. up it, it's the 90s for god's sake yeah exactly anyway uh we hope you enjoy those podcasts and thank you very much indeed for listening today we'll be back with you the same time next week yeah thanks for all your text and email as well and sorry if we didn't read it out we d we do secretly care yeah we, v we care very much too much uh right now here's a track i chose for you listeners this is from a great reggae compilation called 200 percent dynamite this is hoped and lewis with sounds and pressure bye-bye <laughs>